Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, we would like to discuss something that we found rather interesting. Uh, science is now confirming the existence of energy centers in the human body. Alright Sterling, in Eastern traditions, these energy centers are known as chakras. Yes, the chakra system is, um, it comes from the Eastern traditions, as you just said. Um, now, there are energy centers also that we talk about as far as Judaism is concerned. It's a Sephiroth, it's a completely different system. They are interrelated, however. Okay. Uh, the only reason I bring that up is because there's one particular chakra that I use that was discovered, actually, by Jewish Kabbalists. Okay. And it's called Da. It was supposed to be the 11th of the Sephiroth in the uh, Kabbalistic Tree of Life. I, however, believe that they discovered a chakra, not another Sephiroth. Okay. Um, I believe that that chakra is connected to Gabura, which is a Sephiroth, which is connected with Mars, okay, the planet. Mars is a uh, however aggressive. Okay, it's our wilderness, it's our drive. Okay, it's also connected to Camel, who's one of the angels. Um, uh, again, in our system that's over the powers, that particular order, um, and they police the heavenly pathways. Uh, and I'm only bringing that up because I believe that that's what Doth does. Doth connects the chakras, the planets, the Sephiroth, the angelic hierarchy orders, and the ten heavens of the Judaism system. Okay. That's the reason I bring it up. Okay. Back to chakras. Okay. So chakras on their own. Yes, they are energy centers. Okay. Um, I utilize ten in my system that I that I work. Okay. Um, they control all of the energy that flows through the body. Essentially. Okay. They are connected to the nerve plexus. Okay. Um, again, they cycle. They move. Energy flows through them, okay? It goes from the planets into the chakras, okay? Into the chakras, into ourselves, okay? Okay. So the planetary energy that's flowing through the chakras, okay, are the planets that rule those energies. So essentially, we talked about Mars. Mars to Da, okay? Da, Aries, Scorpio. That's what flows through them. Okay. okay. The influencers also, because we've talked about those in the past, the influencer planets, okay, we'll talk about, well, we did Doth, we'll talk about Pluto. Pluto, for me, is the heart chakra, okay? So, it's Scorpio, Aries, okay? Same energies flow through it. However, it has more to do with Scorpio than it does Aries, where Mars has more to do with Aries and Scorpio, okay? That's what flows through Pluto, okay, into the rest of the body, okay. Now, chakras themselves have three main functions, okay, for well-being anyway. Okay, first is what we call the physical expression, and I talked about the nerve plexus, okay. Each of them have an endocrine gland associated with them, okay, and it's about vibration, okay. Now, they vibrate, okay, you can tell their vibration through color, Okay. Each of them have colors associated with them. Each chakra is a color. Okay. The is brightness, the they... darkness that comes through tells you about the vibration of that particular color. Okay. Okay. Is that anything related with the aura? Yes, that is very related to the aura because all the aura is is a projection of the chakra energy out and allowing other things, energies to interplay with them. Okay. 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 And that's the auric field, okay, which we'll get to a little later. But yes, they do have that in common. Now, as far as, like I said, colors and vibration goes, one great healing tool to use on chakras okay, are, is sound. The vibration of sound inherently affects each of the chakras. Okay? Each of them will have a different, of course, you know, hertz and vibration that it goes to. Each stone has a vibration. Each physical characteristic has a vibration. Each chakra has a vibration. Sound plays a huge role in that. Okay. 
Okay, so one that I've heard a lot about is the 532 hertz frequency. Yes, yeah, you're going to hear a lot about a lot of those numbers, okay, and a lot of different ones. Um, through time, that's what numbers and frequencies seem to be associated with tapping into each individual chakra. Okay. Okay, that's why you hear those different numbers. I've heard there are some meditations out there that have a different vibration for each chakra. Okay, a different frequency for each one. There are some that'll do all your chakras with one frequency. I'm not sure if there is just one frequency tied to each particular chakra or if different frequencies affect the chakra system in different ways. And depending on which one you're working with, what it's going to do and how it's going to work. Okay. Now, in like energy manifestation healing, Reiki, chakra cleansings, um, humor balancing, what you're, what you're trying to do at that point is essentially you're trying to brighten the color, you're trying to get the chakra moving because sometimes they slow down, almost to like a sludge. If you've ever worked with watercolors, mm -hmm. sometimes it gets to be like one of those that is completely dried up. You have to add water in in order for anything to even slightly move at all. Right, right. Sometimes they get that bad. They get that cluttered up. If they've, if they've never been cleaned, they get muddy and almost dark. And that thickens them up too. And they have to be blasted clean. And you have to shove energy into them, pour energy into them, different types of energy to get them cleansed. Okay? And then... After you've done each individual chakra, then you have to worry about the circuit, because the chakra the chakras flow in a circuit, one to the next, down right, the front, right, up right. the back, down the front, up the back, down the front, up the back. Okay, you have to close the circuit, not the chakra. You close the circuit. Okay, so the chakras are open, the circuit's closed. Okay, because an open circuit, going all over the place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people that walk around and go, oh, my chakras are all open. That's probably not a good thing because they're usually talking about the circuit, not the chakra. Because most practitioners don't worry about the circuit, they worry about the chakras. And they have this idea that, oh, you have to open all the chakras up. Well, yes and no. Okay? You have to make sure the circuit's closed. Okay? Because a closed circuit, the light comes on. Open circuit, nothing. Right. It just it's it it dispersed. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want that. Okay? So, um, the second function for well-being is the psychological expression, okay? And it's performed through feelings and beliefs, okay? Your feelings, your beliefs, okay? They function through those also, okay? The spiritual expressions, okay? You have the consciousness and the unconsciousness, which we've talked about in the past. Consciousness and truths, okay? Your spiritual expression will be through truths that you hold dear to yourself, okay? The unconscious is your psychic channel. Okay, sensitivity, sensing things in. Okay, now when dealing with the spiritual expressions, you really want to start working sense enhancement. Okay, we've talked about I've talked about the fundamentals in different um, videos. Fundamental exercises that's part of them. That's one small part of them, but sense enhancement is very important. Okay, because as we grow up, okay, and learn life essentially how to live, there's too much coming in up here. Your brain has to start deciding what it's going to focus on and what it's going to push off to the side and don't get in and not care about. Okay. And the problem is, is, especially spiritually, we are taught that's not important. So our brains start blocking all of that out. So even though we can sense it, it's coming in, our brains don't process it because it's not important. Right. It's not as important as that crossing the street and that car's coming at you and you need to either get out of the way <laughs> or it needs to stop, you know? Right, right. Okay. As opposed to, wow, look, uh, a ghost is over there and you get hit by a car because your <laughs> mind was going, hey, this is more important than the car coming at you. So there are reasons for that, okay? And some of it, you know, we're taught by adults as we're growing up. And that's why a lot of kids are more open to spiritual things than adults are, at least the energy. Because they haven't actually been taught yet. You know, those don't exist. That doesn't exist. There's no such thing as that. That doesn't do that. That doesn't do that. Don't talk about that anymore. It, it's not real. So that your brain starts building up all these walls to shut all these things in and out. Okay? The fundamental exercises start helping you 
break, break down those. Well, break them down, but refocus them, because right. you don't want them to just break down. Right. That's when you end up in a you know some sort of a psychotic ward. Right. Or have a psychotic, psychotic break because there's way too much information coming in, right. and you right. can't process it. So it just teaches you how to refocus a bit, so that yes, you see the car coming at you, but at the same time you can hold back too and get out of the way. Okay, that's what those exercises are for. For are for, they're essentially uh, spiritual calisthenics. Okay. Okay, like how to drill and shoot free throws for basketball. This that's what these exercises are for, as far as the spiritual aspects. Right. Right. So, Okay, and that's how you open up your psychic channel to bring them in. And it's not just your third eye. Your third eye is huge. It's your moon, okay, it's your divine feminine. So, of course, it's sensitivity. Of course, that's going to be one of your main channels. Your solar plexus is your essence. I mean, all of these things, you need to be able to open them all and start feeling the difference between them all. Okay, earth, you're probably going to get more earth sensing. So... Temperature differences, mm. okay. Textures, okay. Okay, as far as fire, sight, colors, brilliance, bright, dark. That's what you're going to get, okay. When you're talking about, you know, water, it's going to be taste and smell. Okay, air is going to be more sound. Okay, that you're going to be processing through. So, what it does though is it makes you more aware of the particular ones that are coming through. So when you're right. working like air, okay, part of it is be able to put a CD in that's got nature noises, it's got musical notes, it's got all sorts of different things in it and being able to start picking them out and your brain being able to decipher between them. Same thing with uh, when you're working like with uh, water energy, okay, smells, being able to discern, being able to look at like a stew, take a whiff of it, and start picking out carrots are in there, so is a bay leaf, so are potatoes, the type of meat it is, where now it's just a big conglomerate. That smells pretty good. I think that'll taste well. That's not what you want to do. You want to be able to pick them out. Okay. When we do the sights, you look for shapes first, then you look for dark shadows. Okay. And then you're going to look for positive and negative space. And that allows you to see things or be aware of things in a room that shouldn't be there. Something's casting a shadow and nothing is there to cast the shadow. That's a problem. Or it could be a problem. Okay? That should be negative space, but there's something positive there. Same thing. Right. You start becoming more aware of these things. Okay? And, okay. you know, that's a way to help you become more sensitive to the chakra system that's flowing through you. And it tells you how energy behaves within you. Okay. That's okay. the chakras do. Okay. Okay. Now, energy manipulators, okay? These allow for the manipulation of energy, okay? So you've got your subtle energies, which is more your spiritual energy, okay? You've got your physical energy, we all know what that is. Mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> right. It's the energy of motion. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then it's energy management, being able to manage both, okay? That's how you manipulate. Okay, manipulate does not mean bad. It just means be, the ability to manipulate it on your own. To work there are different you. things you can do. A lot, I mean, people out there do it all the time. If you're into dance, if you're into martial arts, those are all different, two different modes of energy manipulation. Um, same thing, if you're into singing, it's the same thing, just using your voice. And of course, that's going to be more air. Okay, karate is going to be more what? Fire. Fire, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... And it's also physical, so it's going to be an earth, air, or an earth, fire mix. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On yeah. that one, it's it's interesting. It's also breath control, so that's where your air comes in. <laughs> you know, it's there's a lot of different aspects to it. Okay. And it's about funneling your chi. That of course is fire. Okay. But you also have to be sensitive to everything that's going on around you. And that's your water energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. The feeling of it. The yes. ability to stay calm. Alert, your emotions, calm, yes. yes. So that incorporates everything into it. Um, but again, gymnastics, I mean, any of these sports in any way, they're all types of energy manipulators in what mm -hmm. they do. Exercise, weightlifting, any of that stuff does all of that. Okay. And there are different modes, and it's just finding one that works for you. And that's the whole point. Okay. Because when you do anything spiritual, you need to have a way of, for manipulation in order for it to work. 
or else all you're doing is sitting around in a room with a bunch of other people talking about theory. That's not practical. There has to be some sort of practicality behind it. Okay? Right, right. Now, the science behind this. We're talking about the electromagnetic functions, okay? You have your bodily functions, okay? And electromagnetic is how we reinforce that. That's what science looks at, okay? Now, biochemistry, that's about moods, okay? When you're looking for the biochemistry of things, it's the mood of somebody. That's your, that's your in, inward chemistry moving around. Your hormones getting crazy, okay? And that's what they're all, and then, or, well, that's what they are about, okay? Okay, and then we have to look at biomechanical waves, okay? We talked about frequencies. Now we're talking about waves, okay? Things coming in at different frequencies are great, but they have to travel on something. So what are most of like when you're talking about the, the chakra meditations, okay? It's not just a sound at a particular frequency, because that would drive you insane, <laughs> okay? They usually put music around with it. And music gives you a sound sense. wave for it to travel through. Yes. Air and water have to work together that way. That's how they fuse into you, okay? Then they hit the physical, then they hit the spiritual aspects. And that's when it all starts to work. But the frequency and the waves have to work together. And if you're going to be manipulating energy at all, you have to figure out what frequency you're going to send it at and what kind of a wave you're throwing out on. Okay. okay. When you're singing, it's going to be sound waves. Mm -hmm. okay? There's all sorts of different um, combinations that you can utilize. And not there's not one that's better than any of the others. Right. Okay? There just isn't. So it's... Finding one that works for you. And then again, that's why we talk about your faith enhancement. Okay? Because this is a part of your faith. You need to figure this out. It can help you manipulate it. It can help you do the things that you need to do. It can give you the information behind it. But you're the one that has to do it. You have to find it. You have to discipline yourself to do it. Right. Okay? And discipline is very important to this. It's very important to any of these programs is the discipline behind it. Okay? Now we're going to talk about chakras and vital breaths, okay? There are 10 vital breaths associated with the chakras, okay? And they're all, these vital breaths are, um, they're traveling energies that run circuits through our bodies. And each chakra acts like a fuse to a vital breath, okay? And okay. you know what happens when you blow a fuse Oof. on the circuit? And it's not that everything in the house stops. Certain parts do, right? but not everything unless you blow the whole circuit. And if you blow the whole circuit, you know, well, that's going to require some help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're done, son. Yeah, you're done. that's going to require some help, <laughs> yes. yes. Now, the first vital breath um, is prana, okay? Air of breathing. It rests in the heart. It travels between the mouth, nose, navel, and the chondra, which is located between uh, the anus and the, re and the re reproductive organs, okay, and the great toe, okay? It is what they call the most vital air. It's one of the most important. Okay. Then we have apana. It's the air of the rectum. It cycles through the lower trunk and releases urine and excrement. It flows through the rectum, male organs, uh, thighs, knees, lower abs, waist, and navel. Okay. Then we have samana. It's the air of digestion. It rests in the navel. It is intestinal fire and circuits through the limbs. Then we have yadanya. It's the air in the throat, which causes speech. Circuits through the hands and feet. It is the cause of enlargement in the body. Okay? And then we have yana, or vinyana. Air that circulates through the body operates the ears, lips, throat, and nose, mouth, cheeks, and navel. Okay? Okay. Naga, they call the air of erection. Kurma is the air of blinking. Krakara is the air of sneezing. Devadatta is the air of yawning. And Danyanya is the air pervading the entire body, and it lasts after death. Okay. And these are the vital airs of the chakra. Okay. But again, it's all about circuits. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have the major circuit that we talked about. And now these are talking about different circuits flowing through. And there just happens to be ten. And then they said we work ten chakras. Okay. Now, is there a correlation okay. between the, those and the others? I'm not sure yet. Still working on those. <laughs> so, right, right. But as we work through them, as more students you know, come to the website and start taking classes and things of that nature, we'll start finding out more of that stuff out. You know, Like I said before, we don't have all the answers to these things. And 
the more interaction we get, the more this interplay, is. the more questions, okay, the more people starting to work the programs and the more feedback we get, the, you know, the better our knowledge is going to be and all of this will grow. But essentially, that's an overview of how chakras work, okay, and what we're trying to do with them, okay. In another video, we will get in-depth into each of the chakras. But this one is just kind of an overview of what they are, okay. And they are the closest energy circuits that we have to the body. It connects energy to us. It is personal to us, okay. And we, have, and we can create totems for each of those through all of the elements. Okay. There are meditations where you can open up your animal, or you can discover what your animal chakras are for each one of those. And it tells you how they behave. Okay. And that gives you vital information as to how energy works through your entire system. Okay. Then you have herb totems for each totem. Okay. Tells you how air works through your body. Okay. Then you have water totems, which are metals. Okay. And that tells you how okay. sensitivity works through them. Air tells you how interaction works through them. Fire tells you how, it's, how they express. Okay. And then your physical substance, how it affects that, are going to be crystal and stone totems for them. Okay. And there are meditations to discover all of these things. Okay. For all four elements. Okay, and when you have that information, it gives you a whole lot more knowledge as to why you are the way you are. Mm -hmm. Okay, and especially when it comes to moving energy. Right, right. Okay, healing, manipulating energy, working your spiritual energy, working your physical energy, working your mental energy, working your emotional energy. It taps into all of that and starts giving you all of this information about these things. And they're ways that you can use that are practical in helping pave your path right or find your path if you work in the, if you this thing if this particular chakra it, um, behaves in a particular way you may be more prone to do a particular path than somebody who's behaves in a completely different way okay 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 depending on what the chakra is, but we haven't really gotten into them, so it's hard for me to really go into depth. But right, right. there are two other totems that we should probably talk about a little bit. One's your personal totem, personal. and yeah. that's kind of your personality. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And there's one for that. It sticks with you for your entire life. And then there's a dream totem. Okay? Okay. okay. And it's how you, it's, it's the behavior of your dreams. That we can get into. I know mine, mine is the Black Panther. That's what, I discovered was mine, okay? And because of that, a lot of the times when I'm in the dream world, okay, for me, it behaves as, as though I'm an outsider looking in, almost like I'm a panther sitting in a tree at night, staring down, observing everything that's happening. I know a person who has the lion for theirs, okay? They're always the center of their dream. Okay. The dream always revolves around them, with, and they are the main focus. It's not observation of everything going on. It's them and how things are affecting them. And it's just because of the, ener the different energies of the totems. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Okay. But again, when you look at the chakras and what they all mean, and you start delving into that, the animal behavior characteristics will start telling you why yours are acting this way. Okay. Why yours express this way. Okay. 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 And now, is there mm -hmm. a separate totem for each of the chakras? Yes, yes. There's separate totems for that break down into the four. So there's four separate for each one. You have animal totems for, let's talk solar plexus. You'll have an animal totem, you'll have an herb totem, you'll have a wet, uh, metal totem, and you'll have a crystal stone totem. Just for that one. Just for that one. Wow. Yeah. And then all okay. the others. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. So you're talking 40 totems minimum? Yeah. For just for the chakras? Yes. Wow. And that's just how, that's just you. <laughs> we haven't even gotten into working totem energy to help others or in healing or whatever you're doing. Right. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. Interesting how that all works together. It does, yes. 
It is. Um, but again, that's just an overview. We'll get into deeper discussions on chakras later. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. And do remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.